What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the JVH Live Victory Podcast. I'm your host, John Hoke, and this is episode number three. Finally, I'm back with another episode. It's been about three or four months. Uh, you know, my only excuse there is that the gym has absolutely been pumping. It's very common in the summertime, the summer months, we have college athletes home getting ready for their sports and high school athletes preparing for, you know, double sessions and, and fall sports. And the intensity and energy in the gym is just through the roof all day long. You know, it doesn't matter, general population, adults, athletes, uh, washed up meatheads like myself, we all love to train. Uh, so, you know, we, we get after it all day long and, and it's very busy. So my main area of focus is, uh, you know, the programming and coaching and making sure everything's on point as far as the training in the gym. Really enjoy that time. Uh, especially, you know, college athletes that have been away for a couple semesters. They come back. It's great to see them and hear hear about their progress. And uh, college war stories makes me feel young again. Ha! <laughs> On that note, I also like to enjoy, you know, spending time with my family. I've got two kids now, and it's it's invaluable time. So any free time I do have throughout the summer, I... I give to them and really enjoy enjoy the summer months. But uh, moving on. So for today, I'm going to dive into performance training, or better better known as sports performance. Uh, basically, means that you're training an athlete to improve their performance in their sport. Back in the day, 2009. <clears throat> excuse me. When I first started. Uh, When I was building up the business, I only trained athletes. That's my passion. It still is. Uh, You know, even though the gym has evolved and and we train general population, we do one-on-one training and and things like that. But um, it all started with training athletes and improving their performance. And back then, it was a little bit, uh, I don't know, in a a strange place, there was some... Uh, new methods and, and styles of training that were supposedly, uh, you know, the new wave of how to make athletes perform better in their sport, whether it's on the field, court, or mat. And there was a lot of different balancing acts, stability ball, single leg balancing. I don't know. It's just a lot, a lot of fluff and not enough meat, man. There, there was. Uh, a lot of wasted time, in my opinion, back then. Um, not to say that some of that stuff is not effective and useful. It, it definitely is. But the, the sports performance uh, kind of boom back in the early 2000s uh, brought along all this, all these different movements and, and didn't focus as much on the compound lifts. And it was really more about injury prevention, prehab, and, and balance, and stability, and and things like that. Which, like I said, it's great. We need that, absolutely, to improve performance. But it is not the beef of, uh, you know, any good training program that's going to improve performance. Bottom line is, all athletes need to get stronger. They need to add more lean muscle mass. They need to be more explosive and more durable. So you need a full circle program that, that will provide those results. And, you know, the, the beef of it is the compound lifts. It, it always goes back to that. Those are, you know, the, the styles and methods of training that have been tried and true forever. So, uh, you know, and obviously you're going to need a progressive system where you're not going to just throw an athlete under a barbell that can't even do a body weight squat or push-ups, right? So... That's super important as well, but that can be an entirely different topic altogether, a totally different episode, and I will for sure get that one out there. But for now, so that was like the early 2000s, <clears throat> uh, you know, and it's not like it was the beginning. There were a few pioneers that were training athletes the same today as they were in 1995, you know, guys like Joe DeFranco, Jason Ferrugia, Zach Evanesh, they were, they kind of were outcasts in the early 2000s because they didn't really believe in the trends of where the sports performance, um, you know, kind of industry was was going. They stuck to their guns, and and at the end of the day, 
the style of training they were utilizing then is it still is the most effective now to train athletes. Um, so, and then even after, you know, getting toward 2010 to 2000 and maybe 14, 13, 14, there was this big sports specific craze, which, you know, I, specificity training for an athlete is their sport, going to practice, playing their sport. That specificity. It's not really the same concept as it would be for, you know, a weightlifter or a powerlifter. Their specificity is powerlifting, so squat, bench, dead, or weightlifting, snatch, clean, and jerk. Uh, but for athletes, their sport-specific or specificity training is playing their sport. So, you know, any strength coach or, or trainer that worked with athletes during those times that would start using and applying the same movement patterns athletes used on a daily basis in their practice and games were basically doing a disservice to the athlete because now, especially now where there's early specialization, athletes are playing one sport year round and really don't get any time off and don't prioritize, you know, time to train in the weight room and get stronger and become a better overall athlete. It's overuse. I mean, if you're in the gym as a strength coach and you're training an athlete, let's say a baseball player, to do a ton of um, throwing motions with a band or a cable or, you know, rotational band or cable work and chops and lifts and things like that, if you're spending all of your time on that in the weight room and then all of a sudden they're going to practice or play a game and do the same thing, eventually... There's going to be some type of overuse injuries and worse, they're not getting stronger. They're not uh, developing any more lean muscle mass, which means they're not going to be more explosive or more powerful, which is usually what athletes come to, uh, you know, hire a strength coach for. And, you know, mimicking the same movements an athlete would do in their sport on a daily basis with lightweights and bands and funky uh, exercise movements that you see all over Instagram in the in the weight room, that's not going to improve their performance on the field quarter mat. So the sports-specific kind of craze, uh, I believe, has come to an end. Like I said, there there is specificity, and I believe in that for sure. But for athletes, it's, you know, it's it's there's no place for that that stuff in the gym in the weight room to improve their performance. Um, so now I've actually today I feel like sports performance training uh, has kind of come full circle excuse me one second get some water Um, yeah it's come full circle so it's back to developing the overall athlete and really like I was talking about before progress progressions especially now I mean I hate to say it, I don't want to sound negative, but like today's younger athlete is, is a little bit more underdeveloped than they used to be. It's, it's very rare that you know, I get a new athlete in the gym doing a trial that, that can perform 20 solid push-ups or even one pull-up or you know 20 solid body weight squats or lunges. It's, so you know it's, it's, it, there is the art of coaching when you're working with younger developing athletes for sure and it all starts from just evaluating them on a daily basis i mean a lot of them have to develop relative strength and and just kind of understand compound movements and gain strength with body weight exercises for a while before they even you know touch a a barbell Uh, and that's fine but as strength coaches that's our job it's our duty to do that and not just throw them under a barbell and let them squat with their knees caving in back rounded not knowing how to brace horrible um technique and just chest falling forward grinding reps like we're you know uh, as ineffective as it as it was back in the day to do you know mimic those movements that athletes do in their in their sport on a daily basis it's as ineffective if not worse to to progress them before they're ready to you know to 
perform heavy compound lifts because not only are they not going to get the results you're trying to get, they're going to definitely get hurt in the gym, in the weight room, which is, you know, that's a worst case scenario. You should never have an athlete get injured while they're training under your tutelage. You know, it, 0.2% of the time, like, yeah, that, that might happen. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's our job, like I said, as strength and conditioning coaches to to monitor that stuff and pay attention and, you know, be dialed in while we're coaching. It's not, you know, the art of coaching, again, going back to that, uh, it's not just the program. It's how you execute it and, you know, how much you pay attention to detail while you're coaching athletes. It's not just, uh, you know, having the program out there and, and just let, let the let the athletes go through the motions you got to watch their every move their intensity their effort their you know their focus i constantly have to yell at athletes to put their phones away even though it's a rule on the wall it's written on the wall in my gym uh funny story about that actually let me get off on a little tangent here i there was an athlete right he was a uh basketball player talented you know wanted to get stronger and bigger he had an injury and uh, you know, so he, was, he, he did his rehab and he came back ready to, uh, to overcome the atrophy he was experiencing from that injury. And he was working hard. He was getting great results. But once he started getting results, he started falling off a little bit. And during workouts, he would go to his phone, like, between every set. I, it was just like, and I would constantly yell at him. It was driving me insane. So I was like, you know what? I'm not going to say anything next time he works out. I'm just going to put a tally on a dry erase board, and I'm going to see how many times he goes to his phone, and I'm going to show it to him, see how he feels about it. It was 37 times. It's an hour workout, man. I mean, you, if you do that, you're just not focused. you got to eliminate those distractions. I mean, what are you really checking 37 times in one hour? You're supposed to be there training your face off, so you can be the best at your craft, best at your sport. Uh, I may come off as a hard ass with athletes like that, but like, man, I just want them to understand that their time is is very short lived. As you know, as a high school athlete or a college athlete, it's it, time flies, man. It's of the essence. Every minute in the gym counts <laughs> in order to improve your performance. So, tangent aside, it's all about progression. It's all about pay attention, paying attention to detail with the athletes and giving them the best training for them specifically, even if it's in a group setting. Uh, so, you know, there's also other athletes that maybe are super strong, right? They, they've been lifting for a while. They have, te- they have great technique, whether it's under, you know, your, your tutelage or if they've been doing it somewhere else or on their own. Uh, you know, they, they, are, they love the barbell compound lift squat bench deck clean and press they love all that stuff it's great but they're you know slow uh deconditioned and you know their their strength endurance is 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 below average the best thing to do for that athlete is to you know obviously you're still going to work to improve the strength that that goes without being said but you also need to incorporate more dynamic movement so like squats paired with jumps or sprints like contrast style training uh you know not allowing them to skip the dynamic warm-up in the beginning of the workout i've had a lot of athletes do that especially older ones or or athletes i've had for you know some a long period of time start getting lazy with the warm-up all of a sudden realize you're uh you know ballistic and re- reactive movements are not what they used to be or their conditioning is a little bit less it's you know you, you can't cut corners if you if you really are dedicated to your sport and you want to be the best you can possibly be, be and reach your potential you, you have to utilize the entire program that, that starts with the warm-up throughout the whole workout and then you know the the hours you're not in the gym that's another kind of constant obstacle strength coaches experiences you know athletes getting frustrated they're not getting the results they want as quickly as they want obviously because everybody now is is kind of in that instant gratification just due to social media but you know you, if an athlete trains with you three to four times a week i mean that's 
five, maybe six hours a week, you know, you're with them. What are they doing on those other hours? You got, we got to coach them on, you know, new, good nutrition habits, sleeping, recovery. Recovery is super important. That's like one of my weakest areas, especially with two kids now because I'm not sleeping nearly enough for the amount of training volume I do on a daily basis. So we, we need to coach them on that. Um, you know, and also coach them on surrounding themselves with people like-minded. So, you know, athletes usually perform best and, and stay consistent and committed and dedicated to their training and their sport if they hang out with other athletes because they're like-minded. Uh, so, you know, there's all these factors. At the end of the day, training athletes, it, it requires the, the, the art of coaching. You know, you, you have to really care. You got to pay attention to detail. You need a progressive system, and you got to stick to the basics. Stick to what works: the, the compound lifts, improve strength. Always looking to improve strength in, a, in you know a multitude of ways. Absolute strength, relative strength, and you know having the the dynamic movement component, having the conditioning component. You have to have all these things if you want to create lethal lethal athletes. Um, you know, it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort on the on the strength coach's part. But if you care, and and if you're doing this be, for a greater purpose than you know just to make money or whatever, you'll do it. You'll you'll put out that effort. So at, that's where I'm at. That's how I feel about sports performance as it is today in 2019. I uh, hope you liked this episode. If you did, please uh, share it with your friends. You can uh, link up to my my Instagram, jvhcoach underscore hoke. Uh, Shoot me a DM, any other questions. Appreciate the time, fellas. Later.